Okay, so we're going to have a look through the Berda May issue, and I'm just going to be talking a little bit about what I think about it. So uh, first off, nice bright yellow cover. Um, yeah, kind of like saying hello summer, and um, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we have the contents page. Now, if, for those of you that may not be familiar, Berda Style Germany actually has a lot of ads in the magazine. So if you're probably used to your English international translation, it probably doesn't have as many ads, but that's pretty cool. Uh, so there's a tutorial on making like a jewelry style belt and that's advertising the Berda Plus issue. I do have the line drawings up. Um, on a video and I thought that this was quite interesting I don't know whether it's because I'm just attracted to pinks and reds but I think that that's really cute and it's something that I've tucked away in my head is something that I definitely want to try and there's also I think this would be a very useful gift to make for people like if I wanted to make a handmade gift for someone I definitely do this I have something similar that I keep in my bag and I do find that very useful and it has the tutorial there and that's one thing I also like about Berta, they do mix things up. Okay, so uh, first off, uh, they kick off with this jacket that's got these upturned lapels, which I think is a very interesting feature, I have to say. But I do like the fact that it's a raglan sleeve and it creates this really uh, flattering neckline. It's like a boat neckline and I do like my boat necklines. Um, we've got another picture of it over here. And I think it's a shame that they don't actually have this skirt. Uh, I know it's a simple tiered skirt, but I think that it's quite, quite nice and quite um, doable. And I think that you could definitely do this in a cotton sateen or like a stretch twill or something like that, and it would be fabulous. Okay, but it's not something that I'm interested in making. This blouse intrigues me. It's got these poofy sleeves I want to say these incredibly big uh, sleeves and just these simple darts and I'm interested in it I have to say my uh, my 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 spidey senses are like tingling as far as that's concerned and I think that this is cute although I don't know if that's because I really like the fabric the fabric is a Liberty jersey I like the colors and I like the print in theory, I think I would like it, but I'm still not sure whether I actually like the style versus liking the fabric. So sometimes when you're sewing, it's a good idea to understand what you are attracted to, okay? There is this dress here. I gotta say, this isn't doing much for me. It sort of reminds me of the 80s very much, and so does this blouse. You can see the line drawing over there. It's got this drop shoulder combined with like a v-neck yoke it's not doing a lot for me like I said this reminds me very much of the 80s I'm not too keen on it but I can see how this might work as a you know like as a summery top um I'd probably make this in linen if I were to make it okay I love this blouse that's so funky <laughs> I really wish that they had a pattern for that but the skirt is very cute it's got a a wide, an extra wide contoured waistband and just this simple slant pockets and that looks quite cute. Now, uh, I'm going to reserve judgment on this blouse because I'm not a big fan of the fabric. I don't think that this works very well in this fabric at all. I mean, you can see how it's kind of like pulling on there and you know, for, for something that's going to be in a magazine, I would have expected it to, to have like a better fabric selection. But you'll see another version of it later and then you probably see why I changed my mind about it. So we have that skirt there. Okay, and then we have this really cute sweater, which is kind of like off shoulder. And I assume it's elasticated and then it's got like a um, an applique, a motif that you sort of sew on. And I think that that's really cute. I like these in principle, but my worry about them is whether they would wash really well. Um, in my experience, embroidered stuff like that kind of needs to be treated very gently. So I tend to um, stay away because I'm easy maintenance. I'm low maintenance kind of person. And then we have a sweater. 
kind of feel like we've seen this style so many times before with Berta, but hey, sometimes you need to have fillers. And I think what's unique about this, actually, I've just realized, is that they've used a satin woven fabric, clearly, and then it looks like it's jersey on the back. Um, I made something similar from, I think it was the February 2015 issue, and it was a top that was satin on the back, and it was jersey at the front. And that was quite cute. It turned out quite well, and it was the first time I mixed different fabrics. Okay, and... We get reminded about how awesome sunglasses can be. And it's just reminded me I need to buy a new pair of sunglasses. Okay, so one of the two featured sewing lessons is for this skirt here. And I do think that the fabric is really nice. It's a mini skirt. And I might, it's kind of growing on me. I think it's kind of growing on me. So it's got, and if ever you are new to Burda and you are worried about whether you can actually sew with Burda style patterns or not, the featured sewing patterns are a great way to start because you've got the illustrations and you have the instructions. And for the most part, they tend to choose featured patterns that are quite simple to make. So there's a pro tip for you there. Okay, we're moving on to the dresses now, which I'm quite excited about. Um, I like the color of the fabric. I'm quite a big fan of purple and green. However, I'm not sure I would make this in such a structured fabric. I'd probably make it in like a, a cotton sateen or a cotton twill. But I think that these are really cute. The way the cap, it's like a cap sleeve, but it isn't. I need to read up on what to call that. But I love how the you have this princess seam dart going in there. And then that's the same line where the slash pocket starts. And then you've obviously got that congruency that you have with that dart on the bodice and the pleat that you have on the skirt portion. So I think that this is overall really quite a cute little design. Nothing unusual, nothing new, but it works. Okay, this I'm a little bit excited about. Maybe it's because they've used a flowy viscose material and it's very obviously flowy. I'm quite partial to drapey flowy fabrics that move when you move. And I'm quite partial to the cutaway shoulder as well. I like cutaway shoulder um, dresses. So this is definitely up there on my potential makes. I've got some viscouses that I think would go well with it. Now this, I love this. I love everything about this, the simplicity of the style. So it doesn't have any darts at all on it. Um, so it's going to be quite loose fitting, but they've put the belt to cinch it. But I imagine that it is loose fitting and it doesn't look like it's got a zipper as well. I'll check when we get to the instructions, but it doesn't look like it's got a zipper. But this is so cute. I love this fabric. I wish I could get my hands on this fabric. I also like that it's got these slits at the side. So even though the skirt is quite narrow, it's like almost a pencil skirt, your stride isn't limited because you have the slits and that's important for me. Okay, and then we have style number 109. Interesting use of fabric. Now, this actually reminds me of one of the dresses that's in the Berda Plus, um, most recent issue of the Berda Plus, the same one where you've got like the princess lines and you've got sort of like a center bodice piece that's wrapped over. Um, the only difference, I think, is the belt. So this is an interesting um, dress. It's quite formal but i probably won't be making this one this time around now i don't know what to think about this dress it's oversized again it kind of reminds me of the 80s to a certain extent but the thing about this dress is when i saw the way they styled it here i was like nah ah, no way i'm not doing this but then i saw it later on when they styled it differently and then you see what i mean i kind of like fell for it and then we have a jersey wrap dress here. This has got some 70s vibes going with it. And it's also got um, these drawstrings on the shoulders. And I think I like that. I tend to like things that do something to accentuate the shoulder uh, thing. So I like this. This is also available as a longer one, but I'm definitely going to be going for the shorter one. I don't think I'll be going for the longer one. Okay. All right. Um, again, continuing with the over sized dress theme i kind of feel like the upper half of this dress is like the t-shirt in the april issue and then they've just added a skirt with pockets to it and um, it's oversized it looks like it would be comfortable and definitely with how they've styled it with the trainers it's kind of probably going to be a comfortable dress um 
I'm not sure. I think that this is like a, a, a wild, uh, what do they call that? Um, a wild card. It could be one of those that you make and it will turn out and you love it so much. It'll be the sort of thing that you keep wearing or it could just be horrible. I don't know. Okay, so this is the longer version of the wrap dress a couple of pages before. And I think what really works well for this dress is the fabric that they've used. It works really well. Although I read somewhere, I think it was the Vogue sewing book, which said that you shouldn't place stripes horizontally because apparently that's supposed to make you look wider and that you need to use stripes. Uh, no, you shouldn't place stripes vertically. You need to place stripes horizontally. I can't remember. It might have been the other way around, but it was in the Vogue sewing book. Okay, here we have another cute cocoon style dress. I'm not too keen on how this narrows in. It creates a pegged silhouette. I've got a, I've got a wide stride, so when I'm walking, you know, I really put one foot, one foot far in front of the other. So I'd have to see what the back looks like. I hope it's got enough of a vent for that. But otherwise, I quite like this style. Probably wouldn't make it in this washed silk that they used. Um, I'm too precious about silk, but yeah. So again, this is another version of the uh, dress that we saw a couple of pages back. I do not like this bag. Why would you have a clear plastic bag like that, you know? I mean, if you had a tampon, everybody would be able to see your tampons. And I always have tampons in my bag. So that's not cool. Not cool. I'm not a big fan of the fabric either. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So we have options. I quite like that in Berger, Germany does like these extensive styling options that they provide. I think that these are cute. Um, oh, this jacket looks similar to the jacket from the March 2019 issue, but it's showing one 2014. So, you know, Berta are quite good at recycling the styles that they have in a new way. Again, some more styling ideas and advice for some of their patterns, past and present, which I think is a really great feature. Oh, these are nice shoes. I like those, and those are Maxine Spencer's. <laughs> okay, right, and then we have another sewing lesson for this oversized summery dress. So, again, these are great projects if you're somebody who's worried about sewing with Berta. You have the pictures and you have the instructions. Uh, and if you buy the English translated version, these instructions will be in English, obviously. Okay, so... Yeah, I also have uh, the bird, the kids. I need to do a browse through for that because I've got some things I'm planning on sewing. Okay, so one thing that bird have been doing recently is that they have been reissuing their vintage patterns. And I like that because with each issue, they're just sort of like giving you an example of what bird used to look like way back in the day. And this time they've picked, I think it's like a 50s style. I love the fabric more than anything else with this. I'm not sure that that's a style that I could carry off um <laughs> unfortunately i don't know one of these days i might challenge myself to actually do something that's like a vintage inspired theme although i do like 70s i like 70s vintage style not so much but yeah so you've got this um i mean they've put it at a three dots which kind of indicates that they don't think it's that hard but this to me looks like it's got a petticoat underneath um so i don't think you'd be able to achieve this volume without some sort of structure underneath the dress itself so yeah okay now i love this section of this magazine it's called natural beauty and they've mostly used um linens and some stretch cottons for it but if you look at this there's just something about the styling on this that is so aspirational for me and that's the thing that i also like about um the burden magazines is that you know they they have um an aspirational lifestyle element to them so, uh, first of all, if anybody knows where I can get these gladiator sandals, please let me know in the comments box. I love these sandals. And in fact, when I get off and I finish recording this, I'm going to go and look for this. But I love the coolness of the linen and the simplicity of the linen. But it's also got these statement buttons, you know. And I think that that works. And when you think about it, this is the same dare i say it garish looking dress over there but you just change the fabric use a linen and some wooden statement buttons 
and you have something that is incredibly classy and elegant and looks very comfortable. So I really like this. When I saw this page, I was like, yeah, of course I'm going to make this because I have linen and I love sewing with linen. I don't mind that linen wrinkles at all. So this is what we have here. I really like that. I also quite like this. This is something that my girls would absolutely love to wear. And I'm going to make this for them um, for the summer. Like I said, I've got a lot of linen. And I'll show you at the end which linens I'm going to be using for that. And they've got the big pockets as well, which is super nice. I can't tell if this has pockets, but if it doesn't, I'm going to add pockets to it. Because it definitely would need to have pockets. But yeah, love that. See, fabric, fabric selection can make such a difference to whether a style or a pattern is attractive to you or not. Okay, and then continuing with the tropical theme, we have the same jacket, which is the first pattern they showcased um, at the beginning of the magazine. And you can see clearly they're the upturned lapels. I think this is more loose fitting, but it's the belt that sort of cinches it um, further in and you've got another picture of it there this one is a four dot which means that it's super advanced and super hard <laughs> to do okay um and then we have this are these trousers yes i actually quite like these trousers so they are high waist obviously and then they've got um the slush pockets very similar to the trousers that i've making i'm making from the april issue in terms except for these ones that have got the center front zip fly already, whereas those ones I had to add it re retrospectively. But I do like that. I also quite like this cute little blouse, and I was like, oh, it's a shame they don't have that, but never mind. Okay, and then we have that dress again, but this time it's been made in a stretch cotton sateen, um, and it's all right. Brown is not my favorite color. I'm not too keen on brown, and yeah, <laughs> enough said about that. Right, so here we've got two things that I actually quite like. I love the simplicity of this linen top, and I think that this top would only work in linen because when I first sew it in satin, it just did not, it looked garish to me, and I was just like, I, why I would not want to make that. But then when I saw it in the linen, I was like, yeah, yeah, I can, I, can, I can definitely do that. I like the tucking at the back. I think that just adds a little bit of style to it. So I'm, I, I quite like this. And I'm also oddly attracted to this style. So when I look at it at the line drawing, it doesn't do much for me. But then when I see this, it's kind of interesting with the text that it has on here. I kind of feel like um, they did this very same pattern, very similar, but as a jersey, like as an oversized, um, using a sweater jersey fabric. And I think that they've changed the neckline somewhat to make it something that you could sew with a woven and so i quite like this i'm i'm attracted to this i'm curious um to see what i would look like in such a style because this is a style that i normally would have stayed away from because i've got really broad shoulders for a woman <laughs> and so i would have stayed away but i do like that i also think that this is really cute and i'm kind of disappointed that they only have it for the kids and it only goes to 140 but that's quite cute and i think what works for it is the statement buttons again and then you've got like this nice looking comfortable trousers for the kids so this is classified as a super easy so hopefully i can squeeze it in between my um better style teacher instruction homework <laughs> that i have to do Okay, and how cute is this little jumpsuit? Honestly, I just think that Berta needs to make this, draft this jumpsuit for grown-ups as well. It looks very comfortable and it's in linen and it's got a statement button on the shoulder. I think that is very cute. I won't be making this for my girls though because they don't really like jumpsuits. Um, when they've worn jumpsuits before, they always end up wetting them because... They're so excitable. They wait until the last minute to go to the toilet. And then by the time they get to the toilet, they have to try and take off the entire thing. It's a bit too late. So I kind of feel like jumpsuits only work for kids who are very, um, very good at planning their toilet breaks, shall I say. Okay, so that's the mini skirt that we saw before with the floral fabric. And using this stretch cotton, you can kind of see the details a bit more. So this is a contoured waist. Um, so if I were to sew this, I'd probably make a twirl just to make sure that it sits right. So contoured waists, you know, if they're 
if it's a good fit they look and feel amazing but if they're even just a little bit too big they tend to ride up and if they're a little bit too small they're very uncomfortable so i would make a twirl with that one before going ahead and it doesn't have to be a twirl of the whole thing it can just be a twirl of this waist bit to see that it sits the way that you want it to okay and then we have this big sleeve top with the center front uh, button fastening and it's got the three statement buttons <laughs> i'm not a big fan of that hat i don't think that that works that styling works um but yeah i think it's it's um it it looks like a garment i think is the best thing that i can say about it but then with the jacket I feel like we've seen something similar very recently. I know it's very challenging to try and come up with new forms of jackets um, every week, basically, because a jacket at the end of the day, it's, it's always the same. And they've done it in gray, and it kind of looks, so, looks cool. Okay, so we're back to some ads here. Sunlight is coming through now. <laughs> and it's quite nice to see an example of what these uh, big sleeve outfits where the inspiration is coming from for them and oh they've even included links for the buttons that's pretty cool so i think if i were to make one of those linen things i'd have to go shopping for buttons okay and then we so then we have the python skirt which i think works because of the fabric it's pretty cool if i were to make it i'd probably use like a, a leopard print i'm quite into my leopard print at the moment but i love how they've mixed prints here it's like you know, you've got the snake skin and you've got the checkered fabric. Check that out. That's pretty cool. I also love the styling on this. It's something that I'm definitely going to try. Sort of doing a nice high-waisted pencil skirt look with a t-shirt that has got um, a statement on it. And just um, a, like a, a long line blazer. I'll definitely try that look. I quite like that look. Okay. And then we move on to the plus sizes. And I feel like there's something similar in the last plus size issue. I, f I kind of feel like this is a silhouette I've seen before. Although the, the picture looks pretty cool. It's like they've done something really funky with it. Um, so this is the same one as before, but just in a different fabric. And it's got the bum bags. I love the bum bags. I'm going to get myself a nice decent bum bag. I'm not sure I'd accessorize with a visor, though. That just reminds me of tennis. I don't know. Why? now this i think is really cute i love the blush pink color and i also love the use of grow grain ribbon I've, I've never thought of doing something like this before but now that i've seen it the next time i saw something like this i definitely want to do that i think that that's a cute um feature on the tunic and we have a petal skirt where you've got like these overlapping um front pieces that are curved with the hem and I quite, I kind of like that, how it's a one shoulder, but then you have a thick strap, which is great for covering up any bra straps if you're wearing this with a bra. So I kind of think that that's a cool little issue. So this is the second variation of a similar pattern, but it's so cool. Did, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this, but they have put chains through and made it like a design feature it's kind of like a little gold chain but um this is made in a crepe de chine and i think that that actually looks a lot nicer in crepe than it does in the cotton um nice shoes nice shoes <laughs> and there's this jacket uh with slant pockets again i think we've seen a similar jacket in the most recent issue um the april issue and in the Breda plus but one thing I do like about this jacket, I like these quirky ties that just give it something a little bit more different. It's like it gives it a, um, a casual edge upon its formality. Um, yeah, so I think that this is quite, that's quite nice. And then there's a tutorial on how to ease your sleeves in. So each month they do like a special tutorial where they tell you how to do a specific a sewing technique and do it the Breda style way. How cool is that? Oh, lace trousers. I was walking in town the other day and we have a Vivian Westwood where I live and they had pink lace trousers and I was like, I didn't know I needed lace trousers until now. So that's pretty cool. That's just reminded me of something that I want to make because I need to get the fabric. 
okay and then there's a special section here on how to look after your nails no don't don't look at my nails okay so this is what we have okay these are all the styles at a glance oh and i wrote it down i counted so they will normally tell you how many patterns you get in one magazine but they're also counting the repeat variations so i counted them out and there's actually 22 original women's patterns that's not counting the repeats that's just not the hacks because sometimes when they add a flounce to the sleeve of a pattern they'll count that as a separate pattern but i counted them out as original patterns that aren't hacks and you have 22 original women's patterns of which you have one which is size which is the tall sizes and one which is the petite sizes and then you have uh, 20 regular sizes and then there are three kids patterns three original kids patterns and there's five plus size patterns so when you think about the price of how much a bird of style magazine costs versus all of these patterns then it's pretty awesome okay i'll be back soon showing you the fabrics that i have chosen 